All right, Shalom, Shalom, Israel. Shalom. First and foremost, before I start, I want to give all honor, glory, and praise to Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai by Hashem Rakhakwadash. All right, I want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone that teach this truth and rule well. Peace and salutation to the whole flock that scatter abroad. And the title of this lesson I'm going to go into today, go into today is the angels are here to protect us. But not only to protect and comfort us, but, you know, just to be here for us. Just believe in the Lord, man. Okay? Just believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Okay? Because best believe you're going to need it in the time that we're about to enter into. So let's open up with this first scripture. This is Psalms 34 and 7. And you could grab Psalms. Uh, let's go to Psalms 91. So this is Psalms 34 and 7. And it says, the angel of Yahweh encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Okay, the angel of Yahweh. See, you have to have that fear because the fear of the Lord is what's going to drive you to trust in the Lord, ultimately, and to have more faith in the Lord because you know the Lord is the one that orchestrates everything that's going around. And when you have more fear in the Lord, you will gain more wisdom. All right. The fear of the Lord is the root of wisdom. Or uh, the root of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Let me see. Let me just grab it real quick. I want to misquote it. All right. This is Proverbs 1 and 7. Or Psalms 1 and 10. Let's go to Psalms 1, 111 and 10. It says, The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom. Right? So when you fear the Lord, hey, that's the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments, his praise endure forever. Okay. So the angel of the Lord, okay, is going to camp around, around about them that fear him and deliver them. Because at the end of the day, these are going to be the men that trust in the Lord. All right. Um, you grab that? Yeah, um, I got it. Start at... Uh, Start at verse 4. Psalms 91 and verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Right. So this truth is going to be our shield and buckler. Really, the Lord is going to be our shield, bro. See, King David, he was always, you know, reiterating Trust in the Lord. You, you're my shield and buckler because mm. at the end of the day, we are a worm. We're defenseless. All right. If the Lord, if the Lord wants to give you power, He'll give it to you. If the Lord is going to give you a way to escape, He'll give you a way to escape. See, this is why King David always reiterated, "Lord, you're my shield and my buckler. You my my shield. You the one I trust in." And I can add on. Um, you know, with a story of um, King David the Goliath. What was it that he said um before um I was just let's grab it. Yeah. Um this, you hold on to that, I'll find Come it. On. Um Good life. Basically to touch up what you were saying, what you said. Come on. All right, this is a uh, first song. I mean, first Samuel 17, mm. and let's start at verse 37. Okay, just to get the point of the story, you know, to put it all together. Kinda. Well, let's start at verse 36. It says, Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living power. David said, Moreover, Yahweh that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he would deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. All right, which shows you that the Lord, I mean, King David always trusts in the Lord. See, yeah. it could be the worst animal, whatever, which a lion and a bear is horrible animals. All right, but these two animals, okay, the Lord delivered David out of them. He, hey, the Lord delivered Daniel out of the lion's den. Imagine you see a pack of lions weighing, weighing for you, but 
But you down there, you cuddling up with them and they purring. You chilling. All right. But um, going on, it says, And Saul said unto David, Go, and Yahweh will be with thee. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. And he armed him with a coat of uh, with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off of him, which is uh, the armor that Saul gave him. Verse 40, and he took his and he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had even in a scrip. And his sling was in his hand and he drew near to, to the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog when thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said, unto, said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. All right. So he basically saying David's going to die and the vultures is going to eat him. And it says, verse 45, and, and uh, it says, Then said David to the Philistine, Thou hast come, comest to me with a sword and with a spear mm. and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of Yahweh of hosts, the power of the armies of Israel whom thou hast defied. Oh, hey, so there you go. He said he was coming, you know, basically, you know, through the spirit of the Lord, man. You know, right. Goliath was, um, uh -huh. you know, this, this big, you know, brawly dude. You know, David was small around the town. And that's why, um, you know, the scripture says, um, for we walk by... Um, Faith, faith but not, not by, by sight. sight you know because we understand this is the um this is the true living power you know we talking about man you know as brethren we got you know angels protecting us you know all through the spirit you know of the lord man so no matter how you know how somebody you know how big the challenge might be you know how bad something might look you know through the lord you know we're gonna overcome it man Right. And king david that was a that was a a, a prime example man you know a, a good story man he overcame Goliath, man. You know, through the spirit. All he had was a, what, a pebble. Five pebbles. Yeah, man. a little. Five smooth stones. Yeah. And Goliath yeah. came. He all big, brawl. He had all these swords and shit, man. You know? But what what David had, man, you know, he had his trust in the Lord, man. And right. That's more powerful. That's more powerful than anything, man. Come on, let's read that. Let's read it again. It says... Verse 45, and then said David to the Philistine, thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear mm. and with a shield. It says, but I come to thee in the name of Yahweh of hosts, the power of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. See, this dumbass Philistine defied the name of the Lord and basically said, your God is not going to come in for you. But see, King David, the Lord and the Lord gave David, King David, that power, man. He knocked his ass out with five, <laughs> with five stone, which five represents power. Okay. Yeah. But let's go back to uh, Psalms 91. Right. You still got it? Yeah. Right, go um, ahead. Verse 5. Psalms 91 and verse 5. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, mm. nor for the arrow that fleet. Fly, flyeth by day, right? Nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wasted at noonday. Right, these missiles. Go ahead. It says, verse seven: <clears throat> A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Right, man. So we're gonna be during the time of Jacob's trouble when all hell breaking loose. Hey, we're not gonna be terrified at the death. That we're going to see, man. Okay? Because there's going to be a lot of people dying. Yep. But go ahead. Verse 8. Only with thy eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Right? Only with thine eyes shall we behold and see the reward of the wicked, man. Because, hey, Lord willing, we be of the elect. We're going to be looking down and seeing, you know, the reward that uh, the wicked is 
the wicked got, which is the nuclear missiles, man. When this land gets destroyed, you got um something else up. Yeah, I'm gonna grab this thing. Go ahead. Back you up. First Timothy five and twenty. Them that sin rebuke before all that others also may fear. In which you know the reward of the wicked, you know, is the you know the nuclear missiles, you know, the judgment, man. And the Lord is gonna come back, you know, to, to judge these people, man. Reward them, you know, for their you know their evil doings. You know, and ultimately, just to, you know, to put the, the fear in us, man. Mm. And, you know, and re rebuking them, basically. And, you know, right now, you know, you know, we getting rebuked, man. You know, um, you know, we going through these different trials and tribulations, man. But soon enough, you know, we know it's going to pay off. And soon enough, the Lord, throughout the times we coming into, mm. you know, the great tribulation, you know, that's spoken of in the scriptures, man. The world's going to be getting, you know, rebuked, man. But, you know, in a whole nother way, man. You know, that was it on that. Uh, let me grab this Romans. Let me see. Let me grab this. This is Romans fourteen and uh twenty three. You grab um. Rock, but just grab what you what you got. This is uh Romans fourteen and twenty three, and it says, "And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, mm. because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin." So now we're going back to the point. It's all about trusting in the Lord, man. Yeah. Because at that time, it's gonna be you one on one. What you how about Shimia Shah? See, they, see, we have guardian angels now. You know, they watch over us, they protect us, they comfort us. You know, when we, you know, exercise our prayers and they bring it up to the Lord. But really, with us trusting in the Lord, is the Lord, you know, giving you those angels, you know? Take, you know, take um take care of them. All right. And um, I mean, you're not you're not supposed to have uh, doubt in this truth, man. Yeah. Because hey, if you have doubt, that means you don't have faith. And whatever and scripture and Romans it said, whatsoever is not a faith is sin. So you really yeah. sin it, and it's impossible. And it's impossible. I was going to say that too. Right, and <laughs> it's impossible to please the Most High if you don't have faith. Hebrews eleven and six, man. Yeah. So. Hey man, it's gonna get ugly. It's gonna get scary. I uh, trust me. It's gonna get ugly. It's gonna get scary. You know, hey, and the prophets are warning you daily. Okay, but it's about getting your mind right now. Prepare your mind for that time. Okay? But at the end, just but just know you how about Shimia Shai is gonna be with you. Alright. Yeah. That's something? Quick precept. Sirach, also known as Ecclesiasticus 2 and 14, says, Warn to you that have lost patience. Right. And which is patience is going, you know, to this, you know, this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Salakia, yeah. start at verse 10. I don't mean to cut you off, but uh, start at verse 10. Oh, come Sirach 2 and 10, look at the generations of old and see that ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's a question. Absolutely not, man. You know, you see, you hear the stories about our forefathers, man. You know, they were put in these different, you know, different trip. What was I going to say? No, go ahead. I was, was going to say scenarios. Yeah, these different scenarios. You know, these different, um, you know, these different tribulations, man. And it, 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 it probably looked like, I mean, we, we don't know, but probably, I'm just speaking off. You don't know what the Lord got yeah, for us, but yeah. hey, he, let me, uh, you stay right there. But as it's written in Romans... 15 and 4 it says for whatsoever were written aforetime that's what I was thinking about that it says yep. for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning yep. that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope and we have different things we could read back on yep. like Elijah when when um when the Lord had told Elijah basically to go to the river and the ravens basically brought him food and and, you know, he had water. Yeah. See, that's him trusting in the Lord, you know. And, hey, guess what? He was fed. 
Yeah, he had he had food, he had water, he was protected because there was a famine going on. Yeah. Hey, um, we was talking about King David. Right. You know, the other people that was, you know, in the situation, they, most likely they was thinking like, ah, David's not going to slay this guy. Right. They was looking you know? at the uh, yeah. the physical. Yeah, they was looking at sight. Yeah. But, but Oh, go ahead, bro. Oh, but David, you know, King David, he had faith though, man. Yeah. You know? And hey, throughout the times we coming into, hey, it might Hey, it's, it's going to look bad, like the brother was saying. It's going to be bad. It's going to get nasty out here, man. You know, but our faith is just being tried. But, you know, as, as long as we got our faith, we trust in the Lord, no matter, you know, what we don't know what the Lord got in store for us, you know, we might be getting, you know, cast off in the prison. You know, this, um, Revelation um, 3 or 2 is, talks about. Revelation get, 2. And 10. Yeah, we might get thrown off in the prison. You know, we might be in the wilderness. We don't know, you know, what the Lord got in store for us, man, but... You know, if we be that number and, you know, we trust in the Lord, got our faith, man. The Lord's going to take care of us in that day, man. See, uh, uh, see, this is when our, our faith is really going to yep. be exercised. See, a man can say you have faith. Hey, we got to have works, too. You got to show it. Yep. You got to show your faith, man. When we don't, have, we don't have food and water, you know, <sighs> for a couple of days, you over here being a pilgrim, traveling. Yeah. Hey man, that's when your faith is really gonna be, you know. Hey man, I really trust in you. How about shoot me all shy? If you, it be your will, you gonna, you gonna give me some. Yeah. And guess what? Hey, hey, does he not feed the sparrow, the birds, the fowls, the fowls of the air? How much more us, the ones that do? Hey, the Lord said he. Hey, if you love the Lord, you are gonna feed the sheep. Shit. Yep. Hey, we feel. Hey, we we doing what the Lord commanded us to do, bro. And that's why we doing what we do now, man. You know, people might, you know, they might scoff and mock. You know, what was the guy named Willie Mills? Read, nigga, read. You might, you know, they might scoff and mock at us. Oh, that nigga yeah. Charleston White. They, yeah, they yeah, might yeah, look yeah. at us like, you know, these guys, these guys are crazy, man. Right. But we 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 ultimately doing this. We want that salvation, man. And the Lord blessed us to understand and to know what's going on, man. And know what's gonna happen, and we want to be. Scripture says, "My servant shall eat." Oh yeah, we Will grab you? that. We grab that okay. next. Wait, wait. I'll finish this though. It says, "Um, or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken, or whom did he ever despise that called upon him?" Right. So this is a question, man. Did the Lord forsaken these guys, despise these guys? And the answer is absolutely not, man. Like I said, you know, our forefathers they were put in different scenarios, you know, mm -hmm. different situations, and it might have looked like it was no way out, man. But, hey, the Lord delivered them in the end there, man. And that's why the, the brother brought the scripture. The things were written for a fourth time, you know, written you know, for our learning, roughly paraphrasing. Because we don't know what the Lord got in, in, in store for us, man. But we see what the Lord did for our forefathers, man. So you don't think the Lord's going to deliver us out of whatever he puts us through in that day, man? Right. <laughs> and it's a, it's, it's a key thing that we bring out the scripture, Surah 2 and 10. Because you got a lot of men in Israel, they're, they're bucking up. And yep. can't get the name part. See, we need the name for salvation, bro. Yep. Who we gonna call upon when this fucking shit hit the fan? When, you know, when all hell is breaking loose and you and you, you're faced with a situation, you gonna call upon the name of Yahweh Shimei Al Shai. That's why I said, it says, um, the enter the ever, so like it says, and see the ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded. No. It says, or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? No. Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? Nobody. 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 He, oh, he, <laughs> <laughs> he always came through, man. Yeah. All right. Go ahead, though, bro. Um, Verse 11. For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long-suffering and very pitiful and forgiving sins and saveth in time of affliction. Man. Right, man. So just trust in the Lord, man. All right. Hey, man, you may have sins, grave sins that, you know, that hold you down, um, that make you feel like you're not worthy. OK, but hey, man, trust in you. How about you? Shall I confess your sins to the Lord, man. Don't let your sins weigh you down in that yeah. time, bro, because best believe them. De those are demons. Let me just be straight up blunt. <laughs> hey, those demons in your mind trying to tell you that you're not worthy, bro. OK. Trust in the Lord. All right. Just trust in the Lord. Fear the Lord. Confess to him. You fucked up. Okay. You need him. 
Yep. Okay. And it's a part of this thing too, man. Yeah. You know, the scripture says adjust, man. You know, fall the seven times. times. We're gonna fuck up, man, in this thing, man. We're gonna fall short. But it's all about getting back up, man. And continuing. And continuing, continue and enduring, man. Right. To the end, man. And hey man, just confess your sins and the yeah. Lord will forgive you, bro. That's what the Lord looking for. You know, being contrite, repent, repentful. Okay. Go ahead though. It says, um, woe be to fearful hearts and faint hands and the sinner that goeth two ways. Mm. Woe unto him that is faint hearted, for he believeth not. Therefore, shall he not be defended. Wow. And, oh, Go it ahead. says, you know, faint hearted, man. You know, these, these weak guys, man, they ain't got no faith, man. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, and these guys, they, um, they might, um. You know, they might say um, they believe, you know, the Lord's coming back. But it's all about actions, man. You see these other camps, you know, their actions are showing they don't believe the Lord's coming back. Man. Contrary. Building businesses and <laughs> schools and shit, man. Right. Like, come on, man. Right. You got, and you and these guys are faint-hearted, man. You got guys falling out, man. And, hey, bro. Hey, man. <laughs> we got food in our stomach, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, we have liberty, man. We, we kind of good. You know, we catching help. We kind of good right now. Shit ain't hit the fan yet. You got niggas falling out and shit, man. Giving up already, man. This just a this just a, a pre-game warm-up, man. The whistle ain't even get blown yet, man. Right. But um, verse 14, it says, woe, woe. And that word woe goes into destruction, man. The Lord said, woe unto woe. you. Destroy you. <laughs> oh, shit. And the scripture also says, um, you know, shall he not find faith on earth? Because right. it's going to get, bro, it's going to get so bad out here, man. We try to tell you people, man. It's going to be famines. And these damn Christians, read the goddamn scriptures, man. Lord ain't coming back with peace, bro. <laughs> Lord is angry, man. It's coming, bro, when our Lord returns, bro, it's going to be a lot of people dying, bro. You see, you walk around, you walk around, you see gum on the floor, man. It's going to be dead bodies out there like that, man. You're going to be walking on, you know, Dismembered body parts, man. Blood all over the pavements, man. It's gonna be normal. But it says, um, woe unto you that have lost patience. You know, going to you know this this truth, man. This wisdom, knowledge, understanding of Yahweh by Shimmy Shah. You got guys falling out, man. And like I like I was saying, we kinda good, bro. You got AC in the crib, man. You could door dash food at the doorstep. You know what I'm saying? You get wing stop, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got food in your stomach, man. You got guys falling out, giving up already, man. Right. But it says, um, and what will ye do when the Lord shall visit you, man? But hey, hey man, you guys that you guys that lost patience, man, it's not looking good for you, man. It's not looking good for you, man. And you gotta look the scripture says you'll be beaten with many stripes, man. For real. The Lord is going to judge you worse than somebody that didn't even know, man. You knew better, man. But it says, what will the Lord, what what will you do when the Lord shall visit you, man? Hmm. It's going it, to, man, it's going to get bad out here, man. You got anything? Come on. This is uh, Job 5 and 19. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Hmm. Yeah, in seven, there shall no evil touch thee. Hmm. Right. So this is not going to be, and when all, when everything that hits a fan is going to be a plague, bro. Pestilence, famine, all that. That's all plagues. But see, the Lord said, He will deliver you in six troubles. Yeah, in seven, there shall no evil touch thee, right? The seventh trumpet is the nukes. Yep. But see, the Lord said, He'll deliver thee in six troubles, man. Hey, man, the Lord will always going to come through. And we believe that. Hey, I can tell you from, I ain't trying to get personal. Go I ahead. can tell you from my experience, brothers can vouch. Brother, the Lord put us in situations, man. You know, he'll put you in a city. The Lord will make you call on him, man. <laughs> For real. You know what I'm saying? The Lord is going to put you in a situation. You, you, you going to call on him, man. Hey, we done been through situations, man. The Lord looked out for us, man. And I, I truly believe, hey, when shit hits the fan, yes, it's going to get bad out here, man. But I truly believe whoever that whoever that number is, the Lord, Lord's going to take care of them, man. The scriptures even say it. Right. They're going to be taken care of, man. The Lord is going to. Lord gonna guide them through the right way, through the salvation, man. Because see, we we catching hell on 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 the side where people are comfortable. Yup. But see, now it's gonna be opposite. You gonna be. Oh, I got that. You gonna be on the side. What you got? Isaiah uh, six five thirty. Come on. And then, but see, we are gonna be on the side where we're comfortable, and you're catching yep. hell, and you're not gonna like it <laughs> because 
hey, we sacrifice everything for the Lord, man. We forsaken all these things. Yep. But let me read this. You grab that. This is verse 20. It says, In famine he shall redeem thee from death, and in war from the power of the sword. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shall thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh, right? We're going to have a different spirit on us. When we yep. see destruction and death, we're going to laugh at you. And you ain't going to just have any spirit, man. You got the spirit of the Lord because it's like, damn, what kind of spirit you got to be in? A Laugh at dead yeah. bodies, people yeah. getting shot. Yeah, you in a T-bone state. Oh, there go Jerome. That nigga was mocking us. Right. He getting ate up by his twin sisters. <laughs> hey, they look at us now when we yeah. watch, you know, People getting judged and ran over, we laugh at that shit. Like, <laughs> they're like, what the fuck is wrong with you, bro? That's a fucking innocent child. Yeah, that's how you have like, people think. That's that's fucked up, man. That's fucked <laughs> up, bro. You laughing at that people. But see, scriptures say evil men understand not judgment. Yep. Because they don't understand the Lord's the one that killed and make alive and why they exactly. fucking got judged in the first goddamn place, man. And see? the Lord said, um, you know, the wages of sin is death, you know, um, you know, who who pairs being innocent, man. Right. So Lord is not judging these people for no, for no reason. reason, bro. And these when, when somebody gets judged, oh, oh that reason. was Satan. That was the devil. Which yeah, well, ultimately was. But look, you know, before it's the you know, Lord Satan used and Yahweh Yahweh Shah works on the right hand, Satan works on the left hand. Before they do anything, they gotta get authority from the most high. So when you see somebody get shot up, ran over, and Hey, bro, we, hit, we in the year 2023. I've been hearing the most craziest judgments, bro. Motherfuckers getting dismembered, et cetera, man. Right. This is the Lord doing it, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Verse uh, 21 says, Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. Yep. At, dest at destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. Neither thou shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee. See, the Lord's going to put a different spirit because we know the Lord got that hedge of protection around us. Yeah. Um, let me go to Isaiah. Come on, this on um, Isaiah 65 and 13. It says, Therefore <laughs> thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. And which we ultimately understand, you know, um, great tribulation is prophesied come upon this earth. Um, second Edges 5 and 5, roughly paraphrasing, um, sword, destruction, and, you know, famine. Mm -hmm. We understand these things are, are coming here, man. Right. You know, it says, um, behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Which we ultimately understand, you know, that great tribulation has come upon this earth. And it says, my servants, you know, right now we in liberty. So you have, you got so-called Negroes, Latino, uh, Native American men out there in the highways and byways, you know, prophesying, right. preaching, teaching this word, man. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like we were saying, people might mock and scoff. You know, they look at us like we crazy. They don't understand what we doing this for, man. Right. And we, but we serving the Lord while, what you said, um. Why people are comfortable right now, man? Oh yeah, we're yeah. We're, we're serving the Lord while people are comfortable. Yep. Oh no, we're catching hell while people are yep. comfortable. Yep. And we serving the Lord too, though. Right. And while we catching hell as well, but we understand, you know, it don't feel good catching hell, etc., man. But we understand it's gonna pay off at the end, man. And throughout the scripture, this is the ultimate. Um, you know, the brother of Ball always say, um, laugh now, cry later. later moment, man. Right. You know, people laughing at us right now, man. But hey, they gonna. Be they gonna be ashamed later on, man. Right. You know, right now we catching hell. These people got their feet caked up. You know, they worried about Pizza Hut coupons and and the playoffs, man. They not thinking about World War Three. You know, this um this MOTB me being made mandatory. They are not thinking about famine, bro. Cause all they do is fucking eat every five minutes, bro. <laughs> Literally, your average Babylonian is eating goddamn fifteen meals a day, man. And they can't even do. They like 300 pounds, can't even do five push-ups, bro. Fat as hell with no faith, man. That's a, that's a, that's Babylonians for you, bro. Fat people with no faith, man. But, you know, the people, they laugh at us. But, hey, throughout the time of famine, bro, Lord is going to take care of us, man. This is what I like to call the ultimate clutch moment. Okay, you looked out for me. I'm going to look out for you. So while this cannibalism, it's famine, hey, brother's going to have abundance, man. You know, you're going to have, um, you know, Isaiah 4 and 1. 
You got you got um women walk around with big bellies. You having T-bone steak dinners, man. While your cousin now is mocking at you, you know, he biting off his leg, man. Your friends that was laughing at you, you know, they eating each other, man. Why you got a T-bone steak, man? But it says, um, but ye, my servants shall rejoice. So you got to have a different spirit on you, man. Brother's going to be, you know, laughing at death, man. You're going to be rejoicing throughout this time, man. Because really, we have no fucking life here, man. But hey, when this, when this tribulation hits, man, this is when life starts. And it says, but ye should be ashamed. So these people, they're going to know like, damn, I fucked up, man. They're going to realize, man, but, you know, it's going to be too late, man. But it's ultimately going to be a, a laugh now, cry later moment. You got anything? Read verse 14. Behold, my servant shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart and shall have for vexation of spirit. Right, so when you see these people going to be crying, man, while we laughing and eating, bro. Yeah. You know when you have when you get that happy ass feeling, you start dancing and shit. When you got some food, yep. like yes, yeah, it's my favorite food. And you know how Jake be, bro. They just funny, bro. They just <laughs> dance when they got food. But see, these people are gonna be crying because they get, they don't know which way to do, like where to go, man. Let me grab some. Grab two more scriptures and I'll close it. This is uh, Isaiah thirty three and six. Mm. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Okay, and how you gain wisdom through the fear of the Lord, man. And the angels gonna camp around you, around those that fear the Lord. Yeah. And it says, and strength of salvation, the fear of Yahweh is his treasure. All right, it's like when a woman say, "You're the key to my heart." Hey, the key to the Lord is fearing Him. Yeah. Okay, yeah. it's to fear Him, bro. And guess what? He gonna send angels around you. The, the help you find a way way out, okay, and camp around you, man. Okay, hey, it, it's a beautiful thing we about to enter into. We about to see a a beautiful movie, a capture. Let me grab this. Put it in. All right, so this is Amos five. Nah, it's a lot here. Proverbs 27 and 12. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. And if you're a and if you're a visionary, if you can see the things that we're telling you that's about to happen, hey, you will hide yourself. And where are you gonna hide yourself? Under the feathers of Yahweh Shimei Shai, this truth. See his faith. I mean, see his face, which is his knowledge. Okay, go out and seek the prophets. Understand his word. Get it. Get it now, because soon enough you're not gonna see the true men on the Lord on the streets, man. But it says, but the simple pass on and are punished, right? Because they're simple-minded. They can't see. They don't understand the things that's about to enter in, into this earth. It's gonna be all hell and destruction. This is uh, Amos 5 and 13. It says, therefore, the prudent shall keep silence in that time, for it is an evil time. See, we're not going to be telling you uh, this is what's going on, et cetera, et cetera. No, bro. All right. We're going to be hiding ourselves, trying to get ourselves right, bro. What the fuck? This is all hell breaking loose. You asking me what, you know, the breakdowns and, you know, and what, what, we, what we need to do. Like, bro, see, you need to just trust in the Lord and sit down. All right, but see, there's gonna be so much people that are gonna have so much anxiety. They ain't gonna know what to do. We're gonna be so calm-minded, bro. In that time, the Lord's gonna be, the Lord's gonna guide you. Go here, go here. Talk to this person. Talk to this person. You know, this is how the Lord, the Lord says he's gonna be your guide. Your guide. Literally, he's gonna control you, bro. All right, that's gonna be powerful, man. Hey, so with that, you know, Lord willing, this lesson been edifying. Lord willing, we hit the points that you understood. Uh, so with that, let me give all praise, honor, and glory to yeah. Yahweh, Bashim, Yahushai, Bashim, Rakakwadash. And until next time, we say Shalom.